All right, so GDC just wrapped and Unity had some great announcements, updates on a lot of what they've been working on. So this video is to condense that down, review it, talk through some of the highlights from my perspective. Uh, those of you that follow my videos know that my background is very much uh, technical art leaning, 3D pipelines, modeling, uh, look dev, VFX, etc. So some of what I'm covering is actually all of what I'm covering is through that lens. Um, I may be skipping over some of the more uh, programming, C-sharp leaning updates, uh, but this is what I really care about and wanted to relay that to the group. So hopefully we can get through this in 10 minutes, give you all an update. I'll try to pop up some imagery or video about what I'm talking about as I'm talking through it to keep you all up to date. I just want to do one disclaimer before I get deep into this, and that is that all the opinions expressed here are just my own, uh, not those of Unity. They are just what I took as a viewer of the GDC talk and what I think are really cool announcements. Um, also wanted to state that uh, I'm going to use terminology throughout this video in it is announced, we have, you're now able to all of it's pertaining to Unity 6 um, because the entire talk is framed around Unity 6 and all of the great tools and features that are being worked on and coming with that release. Um, so I didn't want to mislead anyone by using current tense terminology saying, hey, all of this is available right now. Uh, it's more just vernacular and how I tend to speak when I'm talking through utility of tools and getting to use new features. Um, so just wanted to state that up front. Let's get into it. So. Starting off, they talked through their URP 3D samples being the terminal, the cockpit, the oasis, and the garden. We did a video on that a few months ago when they were first announced or released. So the idea is that the terminal is kind of the futuristic sci-fi future looking hub that you operate from at the beginning. You can then dive into each of the other three levels. The cockpit being the level that's designed to show off um, Kind of unique aesthetic shader graph leveraging um, a lot of technology built for untethered vr so very lightweight processing the oasis is more about post-processing effects and uh, things of that nature and lastly the garden which is really all about the adaptive light probe volumes and lighting uh, some vfx in there too like smoke and other particles a lot of good stuff. So absolutely dive into those and pull them apart and figure out what you like from each of them and leverage that in your own projects. Uh, it's absolutely perfect. Uh, the 2D game example is also announced right next to it. Uh, so I believe that's an example that's been out for a minute, uh, but it's essentially an example that you can get into if you're trying to develop a 2D game, understand how the mechanics work, how you lay out a 2D game, etc. Um, that's one of the themes that you'll notice throughout this 10 minute synopsis is that with all of these new features typically are coming new samples, new templates, etc. cetera. Um, so on that same slide, they were even talking through um, many new shader graph, VFX graph, and otherwise uh, samples and examples that you can get into. Some of what I'm most excited about, as well as I'm sure many of the, the artists out there and probably everyone that leverages Unity, are the three main pieces of technology that were shown with the Fantasy Kingdom demonstration that was shown, I believe, at last year's GDC. Um, so the idea that those are coming to fruition, they're going to be accessible. Uh, the first part of that being the GPU resident drawer. So the idea of how the GPU resident drawer works is that it's this whole new way to process a scene and send it to the GPU. So you're processing more of the scenes directly on the GPU. Um, so it just leads to this entirely more efficient uh, way of leveraging that hardware. Um, also within line of the GPU, we have GPU occlusion colon. So this is a technology that every frame looking through the camera that you are in, it will discard non-visible geometry. Um, so it leads to mass efficiency gains uh, as you're moving the camera around the scene. Last thing is spatial temporal post-processing or STP. So in a nutshell, it's a cross-platform upscaler. Uh, basically it renders at a smaller resolution and upscales the output, which leads to much more efficient end products. 
Um, so you can probably see without me diving too deep into the weeds, the efficiency gain that you get from that as well, only needing to render at a smaller resolution and then upscale that intelligently. They also mentioned some custom post-processing effects that you can get into now through Shader Graph, as well as Render Graph, Shader Graph, and VFX Graph uh, profiling improvements and tools. So you're able to get in there and really understand um, the memory consumption and other variables of what you're making. Adaptive probe volumes are a key piece of technology moving into the future with Unity as well. And essentially, if you've used the light probe groups that Unity has had for a moment now, the adaptive probe volumes are a more automated, intelligent way of leveraging light probes. And it essentially automatically places them across your scene or across specific items that you designate. Um, and it's just, uh, it's meant to automate the entire process versus the light probe groups, which right now is pretty manual and getting that configured and set up in a scene exactly as you like. Um, some time of day updates as well. So the idea that you can get into dusk, dawn, nighttime now with your sky and, and accurately light the environment. Um, so speaking of sky, having nighttime atmospherics and ozone. So the idea that you have a much more um, kind of a volumetric feel to the environment, especially when zooming out, getting into the mountain ranges and things like that. Um, the, the example that they show in their clip is spectacular here. New water systems. Um, so there's a lot to say here, but in a nutshell, I'll say um, go out, try out the samples and demos that they have released. There's a lot of very powerful stuff within the new water systems um, and compatibility with other features such as the cloud system that they're, uh, they've talked through in this uh, GDC talk as well. The GPU light baker running on systems as low as two gigs of memory on the GPU, I thought was great just for accessibility. More people creating, uh, you don't need these crazy high-end GPUs to necessarily get through a light bake, so that was neat. The new speed tree importer, I thought was great, integrated into the GPU resident drawer even for allowing more vegetation to be running on the GPU itself. Um, so a lot of momentum with SpeedTree and the integration of SpeedTree. They mentioned SpeedTree 10 is on its way, uh, showed a few snippets from that as well. Then we really went from environments and art into AI. So with AI, most things tie back to the umbrella of Unity Muse, which is a suite of AI tools. Um, the improvements are really across the board there on training their models. So the one that most people have either interacted with or seen is Muse Chat, where you can chat in the editor, asking it for help with scripting or best practices. Uh, in the video where I walked through Pixies and the Substance Painter into Unity, the way that I got my camera movements working and the rotor blades spinning properly, uh, with a boolean to change which direction it's spinning was all just me typing into muse chat and hitting give me c sharp and that was how we we worked through that there's also texture um, so they talk through across the board 3d texture improvements the creation of pbr textures from prompts and sprites as well the behavior ai tool which is the interaction decision trees with ai generated code there's animation, which is to animate characters with text prompt. And lastly, audio, which is that prompt to sound effects uh, pipeline. The separate piece from Muse is Sentis, which is the neural engine allowing you to work with AI models that are on the Onyx system um, by hooking it up once and deploying to your runtime platform. There's also integrations with hugging face models, which is fantastic to get people up and going quickly, as well as a graph tool to make tweaking models for performance or cap capabilities uh, easier. So someone like myself that doesn't want to get in the weeds and start changing code can lean into that node tool. Uh, Unity Cloud is probably the next big uh, announcement update. And really this is just the idea that all of these Unity processes, tools, are becoming more connected. So you have the Unity Cloud, which has the Unity Digital Asset Manager on it. Uh, they mentioned updates to UDAM, the Digital Asset Manager. 
uh, such as adding comments, annotations, dependencies, that type of stuff, so that you can do more immediate review and intelligent searching from the, the asset manager. Uh, within cloud as well, you can have Unity version control. So that's just your, your fantastic built for Unity by Unity version control. Um, previously named Plastic SCM, which was, I believe, acquired and, and uh, worked with. Um, so that's a key part of the cloud as well. And then the last piece just being the integrations to the editor. So the idea that as more and more are added to the cloud, more tools, that is, um, that you should be able to access them and integrate them from the editor itself. And you shouldn't need to keep alt tabbing over back and forth between software. The idea is you should be able to do all of it from one place. So shader graph and VFX graph user experience are improved altogether. Uh, more keyboard shortcuts, properties, keyword searching, and templates. Uh, shader graph you now have for custom UI elements, which is fantastic. So if you're wanting to create uh, specific shaders for UI elements, that's now supported or will be supported rather uh, within what they're saying. VFX improvements, uh, the one that stood out to me just because I think it's cool as hell is that in HDRP, ray tracing and volumetric fog output are improvements that are listed uh, within the slide deck for the uh, visual effects graph for HDRP specifically. Multiplayer Center uh, is, was a really cool announcement. Uh, so again, I don't program much. So anything that I can get my hands on that speeds me up and gets me into developing faster without having to code as much from scratch is good. So Multiplayer Center is basically to aggregate multiplayer tools and capabilities. So they have things like multiplayer play mode, so now you can have multiple editor instances of clients as well as the server to be open on one device. They also have multiplayer services, SDK, so you can immediately get into features like lobby, game server hosting, etc. via this one intelligent location. We also have uh, build profiles announced here, which is uh, essentially the ability to create multiple profiles for a target platform instead of going in and needing to hard code all of these individual things. You can set custom settings and scene lists for each profile and work with it that way uh, and in an easier workflow and quality of life improvement. Platform browser to explore and get set up for various build targets, uh, I think is going to be great. So the idea that you can not only from this browser see which build targets you can learn more about that you can export to, but also this helps you get set up to start building to each of those platforms. So that's fantastic. Uh, two big announcements were mobile web and web GPU are, are having support in the upcoming LTS, it sounds like. So mobile web being on a mobile device, you'll be able to have web content and then web GPU just being that next wave of kind of the WebGL interactions uh, moving towards web GPU and that new technology. Fantastic that we get support there. There's also native support for ARM architecture coming. So great news for mobile platforms, embedded devices, things that are, are moving. Uh, that's fantastic. So that's a much uh, desired upgrade as well. Within the XR space, they added in a few new things. Um, one of them that I was most excited about was composition layers. So the idea of a composition layer is that you have sharper, clearer items like text. So Right now, especially in VR, as you back away from something like a, we'll just say like a note on a note card, the text kind of falls apart and almost disintegrates the farther you get away from it. And then it gains clarity as you get closer. This maintains that clarity no matter where you're at by using composition layers for depth to understand where that should be rendering. Um, this also includes things like UI elements. So buttons and other aspects like that. Um, are included within this composition layers update, which is fantastic. Multiplayer VR template is something I was excited about. So it's all built on OpenXR. By default includes lobbies, voice chat, hand tracking, among other, other uh, features. So this is again, something to speed people up, uh, get them moving as quickly as possible, developing for multiplayer VR. Play to device is something that they also looked at. Um, so the idea that you can see live updates in your device from editor you have on an Apple Vision Pro, you're developing inside of Polyspatial within the Unity editor, 
and you make a change in editor, you see the change in the headset in front of you. Uh, really neat stuff leading to immediate iteration, more efficient workflows, etc. And the last update was dots and ECS. So really the core takeaway that I got from this is just that there's more of a convergence happening with game objects and entities instead of this mentality of game objects or entities. So uh, the idea is that you really, in this new workflow and as they continue to merge together, um, you really only need to leverage the entity component system when you want it. You don't have to choose to use it for everything in your project. Um, you just enable it as needed on certain areas of your project. So that's going to be more efficient from a workflow perspective as well. I think across the board, I would say everything here to me is kind of echoing quality of life. Um, it's just improving efficiencies, improving accessibility, new tools that are adding the, uh, the badass stuff that we're going to be capable of making. Hopefully this was a helpful roundup of the info that I got off of their talk at GDC. Let me know what are you most excited about? Um, any additions, amendments you have to what I said here, I would love to hear. Thank you for watching, like, comment, and subscribe, and have a fantastic day. <laughs>